Hello, welcome to Flory Models. I'm Philip Flory and welcome to 2012, our first programme. First of all, I've got to say massive, massive thank you to everybody, literally hundreds of emails, private messages and texts and everything else I've had um, about last week's new show and how great it was and things like that. <clears throat> to be honest, a lot of work went into that one, just getting it all to go through and uploading an hour's worth, which was four gig of data up, took forever, but it really was worth it. I'm glad you all enjoyed it. It was great to do it. And it's great to have a look back over the year because sometimes you tend to forget all the the little bits that go in all the way through. Unfortunately the only thing I couldn't put on there which I wanted to do was more of the forum stuff that, that goes on in the forum and things like that but just trying to crunch it all down trying to get it out was an absolute nightmare at the best of times. But anyway, it went through. So, um, obviously there was no proper news show last week, so some things happened last week which you might not have noticed. The first one was, we spoke about it anyway, but the MIG is finished and is completed and is up there now. So all the parts are up there for the MIG build. It's not on this news show as you see below here, but it is obviously down onto the actual video build. So that one's completed and finished off, and thanks for all your kind comments on that one as well. So that one is all finished. Um, as we go through, we've got the Takano. Now part one again was up last week, but if you didn't see it, uh, this is to the stage where we're at now. We're very nice, glossy and red and everything else. Just about to deck all this one after the show. Um, great build, nice to work with resin, something I haven't done for a long, long time as I spoke about uh, briefly before. So parts, um, if you haven't seen it, one to three are up there now, and then uh, the last two parts, four and five, will be up next week as well. So if you're ever thinking about like, you know, what we call multimedia, which is sort of resin, vac form, uh, and then photo etch parts as well, instead of your traditional type of injection molding, that's the build for you to watch because it just shows really there isn't much more work that has to go into it and in some ways working with cast resin is in some ways a little bit easier than working with um, your traditional injection molded styrene it's certainly easier to sand and fill and things like that so if you want to see that one as I say that's up there now it's below here or go and find it in the video member as well. Got some great reviews, in kit reviews coming up for you a bit later on. We had plenty of deliveries over Christmas and um, something slipped under the radar, um, some of the kits. So we've got them here, so we've got the Halifax, um, this is the Hadley Page um, Halifax in 172nd, brand new tooling by Revel. We've got the uh, AVF Club one, anything with a shark nose on it I tend to you know go with. So we've got the new F5 two-seater, going to be doing full inbox reviews a bit later on, as well as the massive they're calling it the Grizzly. I don't know if that's going to be the official name for it, but certainly the A400, which um, probably should have been around a few years ago in reality, uh, the real thing, not the kit that is, uh, and it's taken its while. So we've got some great things for you to come up down on there at the moment. I've got to speak about a couple of things. Um, first of all, um, the site name change. Something I've been going on about for a long time now. Most of you are doing it anyway, but now we're going to make everybody do it. Okay, so what's going to happen is over this weekend and early part of next week, all your login names are going to become your user name. Now don't panic if you can't remember what it was because you, when you did your actual setting up for it, you would have put in there a username and then your real name. Okay, now your real name ties you to your PayPal account and things like that. But unfortunately some of you didn't do it or it's got acronyms and that. So they're all going to get literally deleted unless we can fix this problem. So to do that, it's easier to use your real name. Now your real name will never be seen by anybody else on the forum, on the actual main site because that's separate to the forum and things like that. But the main site ones are gonna change. And then in the forum, most people are allowing to use your real name anyway. If you don't, just use your first name with some other things after it and things like that. So what's gonna happen now? I'm literally gonna flick a switch, which is gonna take everybody's real name to uh, their username to their real name. So when you log in, whatever your real name is, you just put that in with no spaces. So in my case, it will be like Phil Flory, all one. Okay, so there's no space into it. So you just type that in, it will go through. Obviously, this is going to be a bit complicated for some people. So literally, just shoot me a PM and say about it and I will forward you all the information or even speak to you on how to get it fixed and everything else like that. It's pretty straightforward. Um, there's gonna be a little bit of page on it on the main site as well, uh, which will show you what you need to do and anything else. But you personally don't need to do anything. Your passwords will remain the same, nothing changes whatsoever. But what's gonna happen is the first third will happen probably today, um, tonight, around about 6 p.m. Um, GMT onwards. The next third will be Saturday, the next third will be on Sunday, will be switched over. So it's not going to be one mass turnover all at once. That way, if anyone's got any problems, you can contact me and it's not going to be just all at once coming in. It's pretty straightforward. Just remember what your normal name was. So usually it's things like your PayPal name, things like that. Use that uh, as your login name instead of 
your traditional, you know, made up one which you might have used before, uh, and that way you'll go through. But all your passwords are unchanged. So any problems, as I said, have a look on the site. Full details are on there. Or if not, shoot me a message through the site or through the forum or whichever way you want to do it, uh, and I can certainly get you on the right track. It just makes things so much easier for you and for me. Certainly, like the payment system and things like that, it'll make things a lot, lot easier on the site. Now we've got so many members, it's just becoming a bit of a snowball. We've got a big mush of people. We've got no idea who they are now because all you did you entered your username and nothing else so we can't tie in details and I don't want to go around deleting everybody if you're all paid up and things like that but the system is now basically having a fit because there's so many and it's beginning to crunch under the load of it so that will all be sorted out over the weekend there's only I think around about I worked out about 100 people who are in that grey area where the site doesn't know. But so I don't want to delete anybody off the site and off the forum until we're all sorted. So that's why this is coming in. Any problems today, shoot me a message. We'll get it sorted out straight away or within the hour anyway, and we'll get it all fixed. So that's that one. Uh, the free weekly video is actually the MiG-29, which is part eight, which is covering the deckling, gloss coating, and weathering. It's a half hour section on that on part eight, so you can go and see that one there. Um, photo builds. Now this one is an absolute stunner. This one is the P61, which we showed in a review, which I think is up here somewhere. It's up there, Kit. Um, this is actually a build, and it is an absolutely fantastic build right the way through. So Rob's done a great job on this of showing literally step by step by step and a fantastic weathering. Now, I always say weathering olive drab, if you remember I did the B24 Liberator, is not an easy thing to do. And this is beautiful because you've got multi-tonal paintwork right the way over this, beautiful chipping in a way that not a lot of people do by sponge and things like that. And it's absolutely fantastic from start to finish. So if you wanna see one of the best video builds so far, this is the one for you. So click down here, anybody can see it, it's free on the site. Click down there and you'll see exactly how he did it. And this is an absolute stunner though, really, really well worth having a look, especially if you like you know, weathering and things like that. Definitely the one for you. Uh, inbox review, which I have to say I do have it down here as well. Where are we? <coughs> is this one. Okay, now this is, you know, I'm not saying everyone's cup of tea, but I'll tell you what, if you want to get a kit worth some money, as I say, it's 110 quid this particular kit, but you certainly do get a lot with it. I'm not going to do an inbox review of this one purely because um, what's happened is, is that um, Steve's done an inbox review of it for us, photo of all the sprues and everything else. So that's right below here. So if you want to see what helps Steve thinks of that kit, go and have a look down there. It's really well worth having a look at that one. So without further ado, let's get some boxes open. Okay, so if you haven't seen me do one of these before, a few things before we start. First of all, I haven't looked inside these boxes, so I've got no idea what's in them. Secondly, I never read a review of a kit, um, you know, so if it's got good or bad points by other people, I don't know. This is just my impression of what the kit is. I know I get a lot of people saying about, oh, you didn't mention this is wrong, that's wrong. I don't know because I don't know the kit that particularly well. I'm just going on from a modeler's point of view, when he opens the box, what he's going to find. So, first up is this one okay now this is the abf club kit of the actual um f5 now we've done one of these before he's uh, just looking through his stash which was this one okay now this was a single seat this was the n version or the efn version which is obviously the single seat which we did review on the site some time ago put that over there this is the two seat version so as i say i'm a bit of a sucker and the sundowners um always get me every time because it's got a shark's mouth on it and everybody knows that i do quite a lot of these so first impressions obviously you get a nice little look inside the kit of all the other bits they do on the inside of the box which i've never noticed before which is quite a nice touch so in here we've got your traditionally bagged up screw so what we're going to do we're just going to get some open so i'll say i've done one of these kits before so i know what i'm expecting so really we're just having a c so what have we got we've got lovely recessed panel lines okay the riveting may be a little bit over the top and a little bit deep for this particular scale we've got little bits of flash um, but they do tend to be on sprue pegs not the actual thing so you might be able to see just down here Come on camera, here we go. You might be able to see these down here and we've got a little bit of flashing around as well. Now I'm presuming that there's lots of common parts to this like we've done before, which was for the main fuselage because obviously it's just the front section that's gonna go onto this. Again, lots of riveting detail, but it's to be expected because we are talking 1960s era jets. Um, when they were developed, they did tend to go mad with a rivet gun. So we like all of those. We have, usual thing, separate bags, although it's very rubbing up against various parts here. This is the new 
through, if you like, because this has got the two seat parts on this one. Now, I'm not going to cut open every single bag to go through it all, but just going around and looking at it, it does tend to be quite generic. So, usual things like that. So, you've got your other parts, which are generic. Again, tiny little bits of flash on some of the sprues, as, and they're going through here. Some of the parts have got little bits of flash. It is a nicely detailed um, kit. It's one of those ones which I always said before, it's sort of in between because it's almost a fantastic kit but never just quite there and I don't know why I even say that because I can't find fault probably because I find the riveting detail just a little bit soft you know it's not sharp and crisp uh, and somewhat overdone so we're going through here we're just looking at the parts obviously you've got second uh, ejector seat the instrument panel tops things like that which it all seconds on here but it does all look very very nice there's our second seat and panel which are in there now we have our decals, which is quite a nice touch because it's actually in a sealed plastic bag, which we can't get open because it's in there sealed and I'm not going to open it now. We've got here a little bit of photo etch, which is quite nice. So we've got some mirrors and that on the photo etch set, which is just there, which is quite a nice touch, but you see the decals in there. For some reason, we've got two lots of tails, which is just because they've got them with the AF or just on the AF on twice which is a little interesting, and I'm not quite sure on that one, so we'll have to look into that further. We have the traditional box artwork, which is a lovely little touch. So you could bang that in a frame on your little wall, but it's a lovely little touch. The other one came with it as well. And then we have our instructions. So we're not expecting mass things here. So quite a nice touch with the instructions. As you might be able to see down here, we've got the different types of the F5. So look at like your history of the F5 family down here, which is quite a nice touch, showing you all the different weaponries and the stations that they're on, and obviously all the different types of F5 as they go through. Paint colours are called out, which is quite nice in various formats. So down here we've got everything from obviously your gun Sanyo range, humble, rebel, and life colour. Going through your instructions, very nice and clear, no problems with any of those at all. Showing different versions and different types. So again, very nice, I've got no problems with this kit. As I say, I have built one of these in the past, unfortunately it wasn't done as a video build or anything else like that, but it did go together very, very nicely. And I do have plans that this one will become a video uh, build here on the site very, very soon. So all in all, Looking at the kit, as I said, apart from perhaps it being a little bit soft on the old detailing and things like that, no real problems with that kit. And as I say, it's nice to see the F5 family in the hole, so to speak. So you've got various types now. I know they do the Chilean version, everybody's type of version. So you've got all the nice aggressor ones and everything else like that. Really nice kit to see that one. Okay, up next. Now, here we have the Halifax. This one's been spoken about a little bit, obviously, because we saw it at Telford and things like that. Obviously, when you're looking back, the only other option you've really got for this particular one is to go with the Airfix one, which the Airfix one is older than me, okay? It's been around a long time. Now, I've got a small family tie to this aircraft because, unfortunately, my great uncle was killed in World War II flying one of these. He was a wireless operator. So, again, I will be building this one for the family, so to speak. Usual thing with Revel, these boxes, which I hate, they get squashed, they don't look very good in your stash because they tend to get flattened and all the rest of it. As we'd expect from Revel, we've got the standard quite iffy instructions. We've got quite basic decals, but to be honest, you don't get many on these anyway. They seem to be in register. Just looking now, yep, yeah, they all seem to be all in register, okay. They have that horrible flat finish to them, which is a nightmare when you go around trying to do weathering over the top and things like that. Your usual sort of very busy instructions as it goes together. Um, so we've got no problems with that. Just looking at different things. You get the different front on this, so I presume it's going to come with different fronts at some point, different versions perhaps of the Halifax in the future. Looking at the instructions, how they go together, we've got nice detailed wheel wells. Uh, different choices for engines. Um, we've got movable flaps and ailerons. Sorry, not flaps, but ailerons. Uh, which is a nice little touch. Tailplanes are all moving, as is all the rudders, everything else like that. And it seems to be all very nice. I'm just trying to spot things as we go through this. 
So yeah, you've got different types of nose. You can have either have the full glass nose um, or you can have the turret nose as well. So obviously you have options for what types you're going to do here. So we've got here the standard Halifax 3 with the nose turret. And you've got the other version, which is the Halifax 2, which has the glass front on it as well. So that will be Coastal Command, I do believe, or someone like that. So let's have a look. So let's get one of these open to have a look through. He says, having just lost his knife. Sorry, put the knife down. Here it is. So we have our usual way that Ravel tend to do their bagging. And they're nice poly bags. So we're going to have a look. So obviously we've done, seen the Lancaster uh, over the years with this one. And I was a great fan of the Lancaster because, uh, as again, the only thing we ever had was the um, Airfix one, and the Airfix one wasn't particularly nice. What we've got here, though, is extremely very fine, crisp, riveting detail on here. Hopefully we can see those. The camera's going to play ball. But yeah, very nice detail on of those. So that looks all very nice. We've got no sign of flash, anything else like that. The riveting does seem to be nicely in scale. And so we're not going to pull every bag open but we've got no flash anywhere. All the parts are on the more crispy type of styrene. That's a mirror. Clear parts, separate bags, which is a nice touch. Also the, we'll point this out, it's quite interesting because I do like the way this is done. Instead of the glass being glass that butts straight up to the fuselage, these glass parts are extremely clear. And you might see down here, well obviously this is the front of the bulkhead, so you'll glue there, so it's not like you've got the clear part going straight up against. But again, those clear parts are exceptionally clear. You can probably see those on camera. Very nicely done, so we're quite impressed with that. Obviously got a lot of glass work on this, running down the sides and everything else. Let me slip those in the bag before I make a complete mess. We'll put some sticky tape on these. So we'll that to one side and come back to it. Huge large halves, these are the bits I like because obviously it's the bits you're going to see. So if we cut this like this, we won't have trouble getting in and out of the bags. So again, very, very fine riveting detail and very fine panel line detail. Well, you can pick that up on the camera, catches it in the light, but it looks very, very nice. No signs of flash, absolutely anyway. Obviously we've got these separate um, ailerons for the wings and the bomb bay and everything else like that. So I do have to say, it does look like a very, very nice kit. Now pricing, I got flamed the other day because I said about a kit was a certain price and everybody went on about, oh, it's cheaper elsewhere and your pricing's not right and why are you paying that? So have a look around the net and have a look for your, your different pricings from how these a kit's going to be. But basically you are talking very, very nice. So what we'll do, we'll just move this literally out of the way because we're going to need some room in a second. Now this is the big one. Let's bring the camera right out because we're going to need it. This is the one that some of you have been looking forward to for a while now. This is this monster. So there we go, we can only get it there. As you can see, this is the size of my desk completely. This is the Abus uh, A400M, which I had the privilege to see flying, which was very, very impressive, I do have to say, at this year's Royal International Air to To see this thing sort of being thrown around um, is a big, big lump. And as a such, this is the 172nd scale, so as you can imagine, it is a big, big box. Now we've got these big, clear stickers. We need to cut just down here. So let's see what we get in the old box. Let's just move that out of the way so we're a bit confused. So in your box, you will find, you get it open, This one. Sorry, this one. You will find this. <clears throat> now, as you can imagine, oh, lovely smell. Right, okay, we have in here a very, very big sprue. 
again, let's cut these so we don't have anything about. Now, and all the people are going to say, where the hell are you going to put this when it's built? This is what dining room tables are for, guys. And that way, when people are around for dinner, you've got something of a centerpiece as well. Okay, let's move that out of the way. So to give you an idea how big this bird's going to be, this is the wingspan. Okay, I think we're even going to have to move the camera up to get this in. This is your wingspan, of which it is, he says, I had a tape measure here earlier for just this job, which I seem to have put somewhere, which is always the way there it is. Okay, tape measure says the wingspan of this one is going to be 59 centimetres. To give you an idea of how big this is going to be, this is my entire table width it will end up being, and some. Okay, so it's bigger than an A3 mat. Lovely recessed panel lines. It's got that texture, and when I say it has that texture, it's got that gritty texture to it. And the other thing I can see straight away, and I can feel it, is this strengthener running through here, I can see in the plastic and I can feel it as well. So I'm thinking this has got a sink mark running down the entire width of the wings. Now, does the real aircraft have that? I don't know, I haven't been up on top of one to let you know yet. But looking at it, I do have to say, it reminds me as a kid. Do you remember how kits used to smell when you were a kid? I can't work out if it's styrene or the plastic. Sorry, I digress. Right, okay, so we have got a sink mark running right down here as well. Looking, we've got recessed panel lining, which for 170 second scale, I would have to say is a little bit too much. When you put this up against like we were just looking at, something like that, um, the Halifax, it had lovely. These panels look rather big, but it's a big aircraft. I don't know, the scale effect might lose that. You won't have to worry about that too much. But anyway, first impression, that's the wing. Give you an idea, this is the tail, which is the size of my hand, okay? It's got a T-top tail, I say, like a high tail. Um, again, it's got that texture to it. This hasn't got any sink marks, but then it's got no backing. Okay, these are the wheel sponsons uh, for the main gear. Okay, underside. Again, it's got some funny, quirky things on this kit. I don't know how well the camera's going to pick this up, but can you see what I can see? And it's like gritty here, texture, and then here's smooth, and the line is right down there. I don't know how well the camera's going to pick that up. Can say when I'm looking on my little screen here I can't see what you can see but it looks like the wing tips have been changed modified to the kit or something like this for the outboard engine where it goes on but there's a def definitely a line right down here where it's gritty smooth gritty smooth see just seems a little bit odd that one okay let's get into the big stuff purely because I'm sad right okay into the main tape good. This is the bit you want to see. Fuselage, okay. So again, I'm having a look down it, and I'm looking for these sink marks again. And to be honest, we look okay. No problems there at all. This hasn't got any sink marks, I tell a lie. We've got sink marks all along the top. There you go, we catch them in the light. Hopefully you can see that as well. We've got one here, one here, one here. They're gonna to have to go because on an aircraft this size, those are gonna stand out like a sore thumb. We've also got various riveting detail that doesn't go to the edge. So it doesn't come right the way to the edge. That's a bit weird. Again, looking at the inside, don't take much too much attention because it's going to have a centre fuselage that goes inside this. So we're not worried about it at all. So don't worry about these ejector pin marks and things like that. But to give you an idea of the size and scale of this thing, we're talking something this big by this big. Okay, so this is a big old lump, okay? At the end of the day, you are gonna need a bit of room through it. Scratch builders will love this to death because you can actually really, really take this one to town. So let's have a look more at the finer detail of things. Just pop this down out of the way. So again, looking at the parts, we've got the engine blades. Now these have got those blender type, the new sort of high speed blades. So you can either have them feathered, okay, as in straight on, 
or you can have them cut in the air. Now that's quite a nice touch as well, to have them, i.e., you know, obviously in the feathered or the plain position. I've never seen a kit that comes with that before. So that's a very nice touch. Obviously we've got sections of the engine you can see in here. We've got the gear, which is gonna be extremely complex. Okay, that's just a mirror. Clear parts. Gonna to have to open this up and have a look. Normally, when you're building airliners and stuff, you're not worried about this because nobody can see in it. This one you will do. And we can say equivocally that clear is lovely, lovely clear. Look how clear that glass is. It's almost like it's not there. So, yeah, really nice, nice like that. And we'll pop this one in the bag because one day I'm going to do one of these reviews. I'm going to forget it's in there. Come to build the kit one day, it'll be a mess. Okay, last bag you're going to get. This is the interior. Okay, so what we're going to do, let me just poof this out of the way. So in here, this is the inside section. Now normally if you were building, let's say a Hercules, something else like that, I don't know how many of you have done it as well, but I've built the 148 Herc. Um, you know, and it's one of those ones you can go to town with it and detail it up and everything else. So looking at the inside, we've got collapsed seats. We've obviously got the riveting, uh, the formers down the back here, the bracing, we've got the tail planes are at the back. We've got obviously the steps to go on the, up into the cockpit. The cockpit itself, to be honest, is quite basic, but it's gonna suffice because you're not gonna see massively into it. Obviously the rear cargo area, you're gonna see into it. This here, you're not. And obviously we've got the cargo floor. So we've got tie downs right the way across all of this. If we just bring you in a little bit closer. There we go, you can see this. We've got all those tie downs in there. So you can do some nice detailed work and things like that on there. So let's have a quick look in the bag. So as you can imagine, the decal sheet is huge. At the moment, as you can see, you have options for German uh, Luftwaffe ones. And we presume that's the French one as well. Um, so we've got no RAF ones in there and no sort of um, Boeing ones. I don't know which markings actually carries, but looking at them, they all look to be in register and very, very nice. And as I said, I do wish they would stick that to it. The instructions, I can imagine this will be a nightmare. So for your instructions, we have showing you about the floor, if you're gonna have the ramp up, ramp down, if you're gonna do it gear up, gear down, your normal type of uh, sort of questions and things like that. And then going together, as you can see, it's sort of quite complicated going right the way through. And I must admit the exploded diagrams on Revel kits always seem to be rather rushed as I call it. It'd be nice if they were more clearer uh, and in less stages. But as I said, with this one, we're not too bad going right the way through. Can't see any problems down here. So it all looks quite straightforward. The build itself looks to be going together. So as I said down here, we've got the thing where obviously you can have the in-flight pillows or you can have it on the ground. So obviously having the props feathered or not. Showing you the walkways, exactly how it's gonna go down the spine here. This is what these are, okay, and everything else. And with the props showing how they are. So there's your one. You've got the Spanish version, uh, the Seville sort of one that's come down. Okay, showing the Airbrush Industries one, which is quite interesting. And then obviously you've got the Lufthansa one, and this will be the French one as well. So you've only got markings at the moment for the French Air Force one and for the German one. Hopefully the RF one will be along at some point. Seeing as I think we've put some money into this one as well. So what can you say about the kit? It is big. Um, so we're just trying to get all these back up on the desk. It is a big old kit, okay? Is it worth the money? Absolutely, because you really get a lot of styrene for your money and a lot cheaper than other manufacturers, shall we say. Is everyone gonna build it? I can imagine there's gonna be quite a few floating around the uh, circuit for the shows and things like that, because it will make a very, very big, impressive displayed aircraft. Okay, so that's it for this week. I'm gonna carry on with this car and get that one finished off um, for today. Uh, so until next week, everyone, happy modeling and take care.